When choosing a lighting device, the first thing we need to define is what are we going to use it for? If the intended purpose is a handheld light that can be used for administrative tasks but has a primary function of use while searching in conjunction with a firearm, then there are some things that we might want to consider. First, power. More isn't always better. If you do a lot of indoor work, where this flashlight will primarily be used in that environment, you may find that the latest 500 lumen light cannon is a bit much and overpowers your ability to see more than it helps it. 100 to 200 lumens at max output, more or less, is a useful starting point for interior work. And depending on your needs or the size of the structures you generally deal with, you may find your preferences higher or lower in that range. Also, if your work has you outdoors, more lumens may be quite useful, up into the 3 and 500 range. More rural settings and the greater distances involved are better served with these lights on the higher end of the available lumen spectrum. The beam characteristics we want in a light like this are a good, strong, central hotspot with a decent amount of spill to flood the room and allow us to pick things up outside our area of central focus. The next thing we want to consider is switching. A momentary type or push-click tail cap switch is a common feature on most lights in this category. When looking at options, a momentary switch or a push-click switch that activates as soon as the light is pressed is better for a light that may see use in conjunction with a firearm than the push-click type switches that come on when the switch is released. The latter works fine on an administrative light, but we generally want our light to be available as we push the switch when searching for a more instant response and to work with some employment methods. Today, many lights are available with multiple modes, like a reduced power option for administrative tasks. It's a little bit of overkill to try to fill out a report or search for something you dropped in the car with a full 200 lumens. So many lights now have a reduced setting in the 10 to 30 lumen range for tasks like this. An important thing to note is the order in which these functions occur and how easily you can or can't get lost in the functions. We don't want to be searching and intend to send out a full power beam only to get 15 lumens on an armed assailant. Dedicated lights with only one feature, like the Enforce 6V, or only full power features, like this Surefire Z2S with a 160 lumen beam and a strobe function, make a lot of sense in this application. You always get high power, it's a momentary switch, and on the Z2S, the other full power alternative is a strobe function and only available after three presses of the switch so that you don't end up in that function accidentally. Other lights, which are more intended for use in a general purpose role, may lead with a reduced lumen option like this 6PX Pro, also from Surefire. Although they may or may not be optimal for employment with a firearm, lights like this are still very usable all around lights as long as you know where you are in the switch sequence. Lights in this category are almost always powered by lithium CR123 batteries. The excellent power per size and extended shelf life of these batteries make them an obvious choice for this application. Be sure to select high quality lithium batteries according to manufacturer's recommendations as some cheaper versions can have safety issues or at the very least may not give you the runtime you expect.